Okay, let's take a look now at using the single comma. Different from the double comma, but there are very clear rules about this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the detail. You need to use a single comma before a coordinating conjunction, when the coordinating conjunction is preceded and followed by an independent clause. Also use a comma after introductory words, phrases, or clauses. So there's basically just these two rules. It's pretty straightforward if you get the hang of it. Let's take a look at a couple simple examples here. Recent sales of the computer were very low, comma, so, Alex questioned how much was being spent on advertising. Here you have a conjunction, so, and a comma before it. Look at the second example. Many years later, comma, Jane was able to complete her graduate school studies. I think we often see this where we have a little introduc introductory, and the introductory is saying something about time often. Very normal to say, next week, last week, next year, some kind of time. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at these in more detail, how they actually work. Use a comma before a coordinating conjunction when the conjunction has an independent clause before and after it. Coordinating conjunctions include words like but, so, yet, for, and, or. An independent clause is a clause that can form a sentence by itself an independent clause has its own subject and predicate verb. That's what that means. So let's look at a couple examples here to get an idea, right? Students work very hard. That's a nice little sentence. Very, very clear. Students, subject, and what do they do? They work very hard. They always are, they are always tired. What's the subject? They, and what's the, what's the action? They are always tired. Tired. I, subject, and what does I do? Want to buy a new dress. So I want to do something. It is too expensive. Subject is the it, and what's the action? Too expensive. Okay, so these are very simple sentences, and I encourage you to often try to use simple sentences. Now, those are independent. That means they have a subject, they have a predicate, they have a verb. There's a subject and something happens, it does something. That's independent. You can put independent ideas together by using a conjunction. But if you put independent clauses together, you need a conjunction, but you also need a comma. Let's look at the example here. Students work very hard. Hmm, that seems very clear. They are always tired. That is also very clear. But what did we do here? We added this conjunction, and. Can we just add the and? No, you must have the and, but you must also have that comma there. You must have that comma. Remember, no space before the comma, one space after the comma. So here's a very good example. Students work very hard, and they are always tired. So you have a comma and a conjunction before is an independent clause or phrase, and after is independent. Basically, two sentences brought together. I want to buy a new dress, comma, but it is too expensive. So, it is too expensive, that's very clear. That's a sentence. I want to buy a new dress, that's very clear. That's a sentence. We put these two sentences together by doing what? Having a comma and a conjunction. Here is but. Remember, before the comma, no space. After the comma, one space. It's uh, hard for my students to remember that. The other case where you can use this is the introductory word or phrases or clauses. And I think you're very familiar with this because we see it so much. For example, on top, the car was white. So was the car white? No, only on top. So here we have this on top, comma the car was white, because here, this is basically a sentence, isn't it? It has a subject, it has a predicate, this can be a sentence. But here we're adding this bit of information to specify something more. And that information is necessary, we're, it's not a non-restrictive adjective clause, we cannot use two commas, 
because it's necessary, but it's introducing something at the very beginning of the sentence. After quickly eating, we decided to leave. So we decided to leave is the actual complete sentence that could be a sentence on its own. But at the beginning, we introduced something. And I just point out after is kind of something about time. It's very common in English to begin the sentence about time. And that way, you know when did it happen. But then you have a comma. The last example is as the student studied. Again, it's kind of related to time, isn't it? I watched them very carefully. So here's the real sentence. But here's a comma because this is an introductory. It's telling something about the context, in this case, the time. No space before the comma, one space after the comma. Please remember that. Let me repeat it. No space before the comma, one space after the comma. If the introduction is taken away, the remaining sentence still makes sense. It's still a good sentence. However, if it's removed, it doesn't have the same meaning, right? It changes the meaning. So, for example, afterwards, I cried. Could you just say, I cried? Well, you could say, I cried. That's okay, but it doesn't have the same meaning. Long before then, I understood his book. Could you just say, I understood his book? Yes, you could, but the meaning is different. Using a coordinating conjunction without a comma to bring the two parts of a sentence together. Let's use an example here. I always drive my car fast and my motorcycle faster. Now here we have a conjunction, and. Why do we not put a comma here? Well, because remember, if you have a comma and a conjunction, like and, then that part after it here and the part before here must be independent. That is, this can be a sentence and this can be a sentence. So let's look here. Can this be a sentence here? I always drive my car fast. Yes, that's a good sentence. My motorcycle faster. Can that be a sentence? No, because it doesn't have a clear subject. Or actually, I guess you could say my motorcycle is a subject, but then it doesn't do anything, does it? My motorcycle goes faster. But there's no, there's no verb in there for that. Look at the next example. I looked at the paper and dirt inside the room. I looked at the paper. That's a sentence. That's very good. But what about dirt inside the room? No. Again, same problem. There's no action. There's no verb. I guess the dirt is the subject here. Dirt. But what's it doing? Nothing. So you do not use a comma and a conjunction if there is no independent sentence before and after. What we would say that whole coordinating conjunction brings together basically two separate sentences. Use a comma before a coordinating conjunction that links two independent clauses, basically two sentences. And the comma can help the reader to understand each part of the sentence has its own idea. A coordinating conjunction and comma are used to link ideas together. And why do we do that? To make the reading easy. I want you to be really careful about this. Don't put too many ideas into one sentence and you have a long sentence. If there's two ideas, then there are two sentences. Can you bring them together? Yes, with a comma and a conjunction like and. That's okay. But try to look carefully. Am I writing a really long sentence? If you are, you need to think. Should this be two sentences or three sentences? If it's one sentence, you need to be sure. Are these independent? If they are, you must use a comma and a conjunction.